Hey everybody, this is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the previous videos, we talked about the anatomy of the respiratory system and the mechanics of breathing, inspiration and expiration, volume, pressure, etc. Today, we'll focus on the lung volumes and the lung capacities. First of all, what's the difference between a volume and a capacity? In this particular subject, a volume is one entity. A capacity is two or more entities. So two volumes lumped together is a capacity. Three volumes lumped together are also a capacity. But a volume is just one stinking thing. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order, especially video number 47 and 48. Today's video is 49. This biology playlist is for the basics. If you wanna dig deeper, check out my pulmonology playlist. I have a long video about the pulmonary function test where we discussed everything, including the use of body polycythmography. Who named these things? Viktor Frankl said, suffering ceases to be suffering the moment it finds meaning. Mmm, preach. But Medicosis says pulmonary function tests, meaning lung volumes and capacities, cease to cause suffering the moment they find interpretations. Once you understand what the flip you're talking about, they're gonna be a piece of cake. So first of all, why are we doing this? Because this tells you whether the subject is normal or if the subject has a disease. So let's start with normal. Okay. Hey Adam, please take the tip of this spirometer and put it in your mouth and then I want you to breathe in and breathe out normally and quietly as if you're just sitting and reading a book. Okay, let's go. <sighs> Thank you so much. What did Adam do? He inhaled 500 mLs into his lungs and then out of his lungs. 500 in, 500 out. 500 in, 500 out. Like the tide of the sea in a silent night under the moon. Tide, that's why we call it tidal volume. This is normal, quiet breathing. 500 in, 500 out. Like a tide, we call it tidal volume. The amount is 500 ml. Thank you so much. Okay, Adam, ready for the next challenge? Yeah, I'm ready. I want you to breathe in maximally to the fullest of your abilities. Let's go. So Adam will go like this. First, the normal. <sighs> then the maximum. <gasps> what did Adam do? 500 in, the same 500 as normal, plus 3000 mLs. The 500 is called the tidal volume. The 3000 extra is called the inspiratory, because this is inspiration, reserve, because I only use this in certain circumstances, not always, it's my reserve, volume, because it's just one entity of 3000. Tidal volume is a volume. Inspiratory reserve volume is a volume. But when you add two volumes together, what do you get? A capacity known as inspiratory capacity, because this is inspiration. And therefore, the inspiratory capacity equals tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume equals 500 plus 3000 equals 3500. Beautiful. All right, Adam. Oh, yeah, what's up? Now I want you to go back to breathing normally and then breathe out to the maximum of your capabilities. Let's do it. In, out, tidal volume in, tidal volume out, 500 in, 500 out, and then 500 in, and then Adam did something crazy. Disgusting. What did Adam do? Adam exhaled the normal 500 tidal volume plus 1,100 mLs. What do you call this? Expiratory reserve volume, because this is expiration. The tidal volume is 500, the expiratory reserve volume is 1,100. Even after Adam exhaled to the maximum of his abilities, still Adam had some air left in his lungs, and this is called the residual volume. You cannot get it out under normal circumstances. What's the residual volume? 1,200 ml. Thank you so much. This is a volume, this is a volume. If you add these two volumes together, you get a capacity known as the functional residual capacity. 
So, 1,100 plus 1,200 equals 2,300 ml. Thank you. If I add inspiratory reserve volume, 2. Tidal volume, 2. Expiratory reserve volume, you get this capacity, which is called the vital capacity, which is 3,000 plus 500 plus 1,100. Thank you. Add everything together, you get the total lung capacity. Hey, add and breathe in deeply. <gasps> At this moment, the air that's present inside Adam's lung is called the total lung capacity. Let's do it from scratch. 500 in, 500 out, 500 in, 500 out, 500 in, 500 out. This is called what? The tidal volume. Beautimus. And then breathe in to the maximum of your abilities. From this point all the way up until here, this is called inspiratory reserve volume. Amazing. If you add these two doofuses together, what do you get? Inspiratory capacity. Thank you. Back to Adam. Go back to Earth, Adam. All right. And then in, out, 500 in, 500 out, 500 in. And then Adam did something crazy. <sighs> okay. The 500 are coming back. Plus expiratory reserve volume. Just like that. Even after Adam breathed out to the maximum of his ability, we still have residual volume inside. This is 1,100. This is 1,200. Tidal volume is 500. Inspiratory reserve volume is 3,000. If I add these two doofuses together, what do I get? Functional residual capacity. If I add the inspiratory reserve volume to tidal volume to expiratory reserve volume, what do you call this? Vital capacity. Add everything together, and this is your total lung capacity. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, medicosis schmeezy. Now, if you want to learn something for your life, get a piece of paper and draw everything from scratch. Otherwise, there is no hope for you. But hey, medicosis, this is easy now. I got this figured out. You're gonna forget it on your exam. Trust me. Get a piece of paper and practice, doofus. Here are the volumes. Here are the capacities. Let's go. Tidal volume is 500. Inspiratory reserve volume, 3,000. Expiratory reserve volume, 1,100. Residual volume, 1,200. The capacities. Add tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume. What do you get? Inspiratory capacity. Thank you so much. If I add expiratory reserve volume to the residual volume, I get functional residual capacity. The addition of tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, and expiratory reserve volume will yield the vital capacity. Add everything together, you get the total lung capacity. Now, let's see if you are good at algebra or not. Vital capacity, as you know, is the first three volumes. Inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume. All right. And since inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume is called the inspiratory capacity, you can argue logically and mathematically that the vital capacity is the inspiratory reserve volume plus the expiratory reserve volume. Wonderful. Next, you know that the total lung capacity is everything added together. That's true. Since inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume equals inspiratory capacity, and since expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume is the functional residual capacity, you can argue logically that the total lung capacity equals inspiratory capacity plus functional residual capacity. Since these three are called vital capacity, you can argue that the total lung capacity equals vital capacity plus residual volume. Love it. Don't forget, volume is just one thing. Capacity is more than one thing, more than one volume. Put differently, capacity is two or more volumes. All of these volumes and capacities could be measured by a device known as spirometer or spirometry, except anything related to the residual volume. So, spirometry cannot measure the residual volume, and therefore, Spirometry cannot measure the functional residual capacity. Why not? Because functional residual capacity equals residual volume plus expiratory reserve volume. Since residual volume is included here, this will not be able to be measured by the freaking spirometer. Moreover, total lung capacity is all of the volumes added together, including residual volume. Since spirometry cannot measure the residual volume, therefore, spirometry cannot measure the total lung capacity. 
the vital capacity is super important if you are a coach. Let's say that you have two doofuses applying for the job. Both of them would like to be football players. You have Adam and Jeffrey, for example. Well, one of the parameters that can help you decide who is more physically fit is the vital capacity. If Adam has a higher vital capacity, it probably means Adam is gonna perform better at the game, all things being equal. Because it means that his lungs can hold more air. Conversely, let's say that Jeffrey is alive just with one lung. He has removed the other lung in a surgery called pneumonectomy. What do you think is gonna happen to Adam's vital capacity? Well, it has dropped by half because he's now living with just one lung. So if the normal vital capacity is X, his vital capacity now is half X. This is not very good in a football game. If you like this video, check out my acid-base imbalance course on my website, medicosisperfectionatus.com. I've said it before and I will say it again. I'm a big fan of people who study in January, in the beginning of the year. So here is a 60% discount for you. Use promo code New Year Learning at checkout. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.